I told him like, yo, this is the shit that I'm doing. This shit is not particularly comfortable. Like we talked about how, you know, at the end of a meal, people expect to leave having had a good time. At the end of these dinners, like the matrix is different. My name is Tsundewe. I live in New Orleans. I am Nigerian and I cook and I write. We're going to have uh, throughout the day here at the restaurant, two restaurants, Restaurant Iris and next door, the second line, we're going to be hosting people serving a four course meal. And we're going to have, I think, four questions that speak to themes of race, identity, blackness. By we, I mean the dinner guests, myself, and some other special guests who are going to be part of the evening. We are at the second line in Memphis, Tennessee. This is my favorite place to have an after work drink or a middle of the day drink or sometimes a morning drink. <laughs> We are here for a celebration, a collaboration between Tunde Way and Chef Kelly English. We got uh, John T. Edge here with us, giving us some some context, and I'm here to put a big bow, a big uncomfortable race bow, on top, on top of all of it. You don't want to talk about uncomfortable things at, at dinner and restaurants because you don't want to upset your stomach. My mother used to always tell me, don't eat with anybody that's going to give you indigestion. But Discomfort is crucial, especially in conversations that are as nuanced and as very difficult as race is. Because when we, when we experience discomfort, I think one of the things that is happening is we're entering into a new space, into a new territory, potentially where we could learn something. If we don't appreciate that discomfort, that, that discomfort and really sit with it, then we miss the opportunity for the next phase. Eating is what we do as Southerners to build community and to cross lines. And so you're gonna to have to get uncomfortable sometimes if you wanna get some work done. And that's what we're trying to do here today. Sit here with each other and sit with the discomfort, sit with the feelings. We might have some indigestion afterwards, but that's what Tums is for. We'll be all right. We'll get some work done. <laughs> a typical reaction to discomfort that I've found is, it's like this attempt to act a solution. And folks would be like, how do we fix this? It's disingenuous because you haven't really considered what the it is. Going straight to fixing it without understanding it is another way of uh, sidestepping it. We pretend that spaces are neutral, but there are no neutral spaces. Food is a legitimate space to practice dissent, to practice inquiry and query, and to practice conversation, to practice reconciliation, to practice protest. Because food spaces are the site of exploitation, ex expropriation, appropriation. It seems appropriate to do this on Columbus Day. Colonialism leads to some of the issues that Tunde is going to confront tonight and ask us to confront. I think that Southern food, the African culture that really created Southern food doesn't get the recognition it deserves. But all the Southern food that we think of uh, has a deep African root. And, and maybe not even a root, it, it's African food. It's food that, that we identify with as the South. We're, we're foods that the people that, that were from Africa that were brought here, uh, the slaves were given to to kind of fend for themselves with. I mean, the, the people that lived in in the the homes, the big homes, they weren't eating the leaves of turnips. They were eating the turnips, but the turnip greens were given to the slaves, and you know they had to figure out what to do with it. Oh, and they'd throw them, you know, the foot of a pig to uh, to to season it up. So um, we ended up with greens. And I think if you stopped any southerner and pulled a hundred and 50 Southerners, 100, 100 of them would tell you that greens were probably the most Southern food. But we don't, we don't learn about that really in our history books either. These issues that Tunde is asking us to confront, and he's confronting himself, are American issues, they're world issues. They can't be issues that black people solely grapple with. We can't place the responsibility for the fixes on the shoulders of blacks. So that means along with listening, there's action to come for whites. You don't ask the person who is suffering or who has suffered from the power imbalance, how it is fixed. You direct that question at, at yourself and you understand like, you know, I'm the villain here, you know, and I have the agency to begin to examine my villainhood and my role and my responsibility. I think discomfort signals that you are on the path towards doing the work.
but discomfort isn't the goal. Like we're not here to just like sit around and be uncomfortable. It's like the moment that provokes something transformational. There's a difference between being silent and listening and then doing nothing and being silent and listening and then being more empathetic walking out of that dinner, then taking a new kind of action a week later, a month later. I think Tunde realizes, and I think so many people in this moment realize the power of restaurants, the power of chefs, the power of narratives that are shaped around the table. And so if we recognize there's power to be had by gathering at the table, and we subvert those old notions that you shouldn't talk about politics, you shouldn't talk about religion, and instead embrace the idea that at the table, a powerful place, you can talk about politics, you can talk about religion, you should talk about racial oppression, you should talk about the stain of racism on the South, then beautiful, magical, tragical, threatening things can happen. <laughs> Confrontations can happen. It's about like having left with something, and that's something at the time of leaving it could be irritation, it could be anger, it could also be joy, it could be meditative reflection, but that thing keeps growing and hopefully if it's anger or frustration, it transforms itself into something more productive. We need these kinds of conversations in the city. I think there'll be some introspection, I think there'll be some quiet. I hope that people will understand what we're trying to do, will understand that this is a beautiful program that we're putting together here and we're glad that they're here with us and a part of that beauty.